So, uh, how many of you say you are, your aim is inconsistent? Some days you feel like you're fucking wrecking everyone, and then the next day you feel like, oh shit, man, I can't hit the fucking next side of a fucking wall. But then, like, say, for example, you go to practice the range, like, right here, and then you practice your aim, and you're like, oh, but, like, I'm doing pretty good. Like, if I flick, like, I can get these training bots pretty easy, right? But, like, when I go against actual players, it's like, what the fuck, man? My shit's all fuck. Now, let me tell you something, chat. It's... Prop well, okay for some of you it might actually be a combination of your aim and what I'm about to say But for a lot of you you might just overthink something and not actually be really realizing Something you need to realize and I bet a lot of people do this Subconsciously, but don't actually realize they're doing it is a uh, aiming in overwatch is all based on movement of yourself and the enemy and your movement highly affects your own aim a lot more than you think. And I think on the days where you're aiming well, it's because you're doing movement that is beneficial to your aim. When you're doing it, movement, when your aim is bad, quote unquote bad, you are doing counterproductive movement. And uh, one of the reasons I'll show you why movement is like really really important in overwatch because there's a bunch of different things but for example uh going like this with your mouse is the same as going like this with your movement and for example if you want to flick to this guy but you move left when you want to flick you overshoot because it's basically the same thing just amplified io sucks says you shouldn't use movement to aim movement is very fucking important in overwatch and if you don't realize you're doing certain movements, you end up fucking your own aim over because of it. Every hero has specific movement requirements to make your aim easier. Well, at least for me and my aim style. And I'll go into a deathmatch and I'll show you what I mean by that. But uh, there's certain things you can do that will help make your aim more consistent. And it's helped me realize it and it's helped me. One of the things is why AD ADing and crouch spamming is so important is because not only it, it fucks over the other person, but it also helps you be more consistent in a way. Because if you know you're just AD AD crouch spamming, you know you just need to like aim in the middle. You just counteract your own strafing. And for example, if you are strafing, you know that you just need to do this. A lot of it is knowing how you want to move, so then you can counteract it with your own mouse movement. But a lot of times people go on autopilot mode and kind of just move, but like not move their mouse to counteract it because they're doing random as fuck movements. So they end up like over aiming or overshooting because they're not counteracting their own movements. But if you have rules of thumbs against certain things, you can like do it uh, intentionally and then later on do it subconsciously because you've been doing it so much. You don't always want to be predictable. Of course you don't do it all the time, but you do it as a baseline. The, one of the reasons that movement in Overwatch is very complicated and aiming in Overwatch is very complicated is because you need to move to dodge your enemy, but you also need to move to make aiming for yourself easier. It's a combination of everything. The other thing is you literally have to be sh hitting your shots on the other person when you're moving or else there's no pressure on them to perform. So say you're a soldier that's crouch spamming and AD spamming a widow. If you're not pelting her, then she has no reason to like rush a shot. And when people are forced to rush shots is when they miss more. So it's a combination of dodging their shots, making sure you're hitting them, and making sure your movement is predictable to yourself so you can actually aim with your movement. And when I'm in the game, I'll try and show you like the different kind of movement things and the movement ticks I have against different kind of heroes and stuff. The reason I'm trying to say this is I'm pretty sure a lot of people have learned this but do it subconsciously and don't realize they're doing it for those reasons because they've just played the game so much that they've kind of just had those motions like imprinted in their head. So like that's why a lot of one tricks can uh like ha know like all the character matchups and all the things they need to do and do everything naturally 
But if they switch to different heroes, they might have bad aim or not know how to move in a certain way. I'll try and explain like the little things I've learned with like a bunch of different hit scan heroes. I can start off with McCree. With McCree, it's mostly about just strafing against most things. Like a uh, Tracer, you mostly want to do large strafes left and right. Against Soldier, it's mostly the same. Basically, with McCree, and large strafes, it doesn't matter how much the person is gonna track you, it's more so you need to be able to hit your shots reliably because you can kill them faster. AD spam against Tracer and Soldier doesn't matter because they can just aim at the middle and still hit you and they have more shots to go through. And Tracer especially, she's gonna wanna blink anyways. But there's also a, a you don't wanna do large strafes against a Widow. You wanna do stutter steps is what I call them. So with how I aim with McCree is it's a lot of like a large strafes and then uh, me aiming and like counteracting my strafes because I know how I'm going to move pretty much. So the reason I like doing stutter steps against Widow is because she has a, such a small hitbox and she's mostly standing still. And uh, if you're strafing and you're trying to counteract your strafing against a person that's really small and standing still, there's a large chance you're going to miss. But if you stutter step, you can readjust your aim after you stutter step. And you're basically trying to move when you think she's going to shoot. Because it doesn't matter if you're ADADing, it just matters when she decides to shoot and whether you dodge that. But uh, one of the reasons I don't like doing very fast ADADs as McCree is it's, it's very hard to like counteract your AD if you're like doing it really spammy and unreliably. Whereas if you're kind of just like going left and right, you can like kind of counterbalance it a lot more because at the end of the day it's more important if you're able to hit your shots than whether they're able to hit you with their shots like of course you you still want to uh like move and try and like dodge their shots but as long as you're hitting them it forces them to make rush their shots as well and like uh especially against genjis is you can do a lot of wide strafes more and take more time with your aim instead of like doing AD AD dodging because they're projectiles, so it doesn't matter. How to move against a Hanzo? I would talk about that if there was a Hanzo on the other team so I could kind of show it or a Hanzo in the lobby. But uh, with when you're fighting as a hit scan against any projectile, it's a it's it's really weird because. You don't want to jump, but at the same time, jumping is one of the best dodging tactics. You, you want to predict when he's going to shoot the arrow, pretty much. And uh, say you're AD ADing and you think he might have a shot lined up for your head, right? If you jump, he's going to hit your body. And if you know you're going to jump, you can start aiming down because you know you're going to jump. But at the same time, if you jump before he's lining up a shot or before he's about to shoot, it makes it very easy for him to just line up a headshot because you're in a very predictable arc. So it's all about thinking about when he's actually going to shoot the shot. Against uh, projectiles, you don't want to do tight strafes because if they just aim in the middle, it's going to hit you. You want to do long strafes or long stutter step strafes. So they kind of like have to do very big guesses. But as you can see, most of the time when I'm shooting as McCree, especially McCree versus McCree, is I'm not doing a lot of like jitter AD AD. And it's making it so I can track how I want to move very well. Because uh, say I'm not paying attention to how I'm moving and I start aiming right as soon as I aim right as well, I'll overshoot because it's like two times the speed of how my mouse is actually moving. The, the times you want to crouch the most is uh, against semi-auto hitscan, especially like Widow, because Widows are looking for your head, and crouching, if they're aiming for your head, will cause them to miss. One of the times you want to crouch in McCree vs. McCree is if the other McCree gets a jump on you first, because then you need to like make sure he misses a shot to assure you can like catch up. So like, there he shot first. So if I do crouch stutter steps, my rhythm, my rhythm becomes different. Movement is basically like a rhythm pretty much. And once you're able to figure out another person's rhythm, your aim becomes easier. As long as you're in sync with your own rhythm as well. Also, one of the other important things is you don't want to rush your shots. 
don't feel like you need to shoot as soon as you're available to shoot another shot because that'll only cause you to miss more most of the time. Try and like see his rhythm, get used to your own rhythm, and then just like track him more. Or, or do mini flicks to him. I'm more of a like a tracking kind of aimer, as most people know. Now storm arrow, when Hanzo uses storm arrow, never jump because uh, he can shoot whenever he wants pretty much. Dodging storm arrow is like basically luck. When I'm doing all this, I'm not saying you should do what I do and aim like how I move. I'm just saying how like, I move and how I aim and how I've kind of learned my own consistencies. You should all try and learn how you move, learn how you aim and how it affects your own style. But yeah, I'm just showing you like how I think about it and how I've gotten my kind of baselines and how I'm able to like predict my own aiming. Cause I'm using a, a style of aim and a setup that a lot of people probably can't use. I only think wrist aim is better than arm i think arm aim is better for flicking and wrist aim is better for tracking so now i'll show you a soldier now here's where you learn how to track more reliably and how to fuck over hit scan really fucking hard against mccree's and widows ad crouch spam and make sure you're hitting them because that's how they miss is when you're hitting them but against any other trackers, you want to do wide strafes. So like McCree, I just fucking crouch spam and AD to crouch spam. And as long as I'm hitting him, there's almost nothing he can do about it. Is soldier advice valid for Tracer? I'll try and show Tracer. But most of the time, counter strafing or AD ADing against Tracer isn't really needed. But you can pretty you can move pretty linear linearly against like Genji's. You can move like pretty like linearly as soldier. The onus of their aim is mostly up to them, so you can make your aim as like easy as possible to make sure you're just dissing out a bunch of damage to them. Unfortunately, I'm only finding Genji's, and I can't show you just like fucking fucking over McCree's and shit. See, even though he got a headshot. As long as I'm AD AD spamming and hitting him with stuff, it's very fucking hard for a McCree to actually hit an AD AD soldier. Because like, he's getting aim punched and my hitbox is going all over, all over the fucking place. And the other thing is like, when you're in a soldier versus soldier, I know saying jumping against soldier is bad because it makes you easy, easier to get tracked. But at the same time, it makes your tracking easier when you jump. So it's a trade-off. As long as you're hitting your shots, it's more... You want to do what's best that will fuck over their aim as well as make your aim better. Was hyper-crouching a thing? Hyper-crouching has always been a thing, unfortunately. I mean, you've probably seen me McCree and like face people, and then like I complain about crouch spamming all the time. Because crouch spamming is just so broken and so reliable. Especially against like semi-auto heroes. See, I wasn't crouch spamming as much against in the soldier duel because he doesn't do as much damage as a McCree. So I don't need to dodge like... When, when you're in a soldier, like a, a tracking duel, you're not worried about whether they're shooting your head or not. So to make your tracking the most consistent as possible, you want to do like 80-80 strafes that you can counteract. But I think you saw there, when I started shooting the Genji, I was pretty much just doing wide strafes and making sure I could hit my shots and as soon as I saw McCree I just started crouch spamming because they both rely on different aim styles and you don't have to, you have to there's different threats you have to worry about but uh the only time you're gonna get one click by tracer is if uh the tracer gets you when you're aiming at someone else so you're not aware that she's about to go on you but uh, I said earlier, against tracers, you want to wide strafe a lot because if you just 80-80 strafe, they can just aim in the middle and hit you. 
and as long as you're wide strafing and controlling your own aim, as long as you're damaging the other tracer, it forces her to do stuff and forces her to make movements. A lot of tracer is less about movement and more about using your blinks effectively. So you want to do the same thing against a hit scan as soldier. You want to 80 80 strafe, but you, your damage isn't as strong as soldiers. So if you 80 80 strafe for too long, they can force a shot on you. And since your health pool is so low, any damage you take is like a lot. I swear if everyone's tracer now, I don't, Jesus Christ. I can't say I'm going tracer and then literally everyone in the fucking lobby goes tracer. That's literally fucking opposite of what I want. But so for example, Tracer versus McCree is a lot about baiting the flashbang out of the McCree or staying at a safe distance so you won't get flashbanged and then kind of like blinking when you think he's gonna shoot. Because any damage you take from a McCree is like insane. And uh, a lot of Tracer's aim is basically knowing where you're gonna blink and then kind of pre-aiming after you've blinked so you're already on the target so say like i'm gonna blink straight but i know the guy's like right there so i'm already like trying to like aim to where he is while i'm blinking or i try and blink in a way where i don't have to move the mouse that much the thing with soldier tracer versus soldier is very weird because it's like a very weird skill matchup especially when he has health pack uh, usually in Tracer vs. Soldier, you're trying to like blink and kind of pepper him until he's wasted all of his bullets and then you all in him when he's uh, reloading because uh, Soldier has a really long reload. But a lot of like Soldier vs. McCree is if the McCree is looking at you, you usually want to blink away to a different direction so it forces him to move and forces him to make flick shots. So like say this McCree's looking at me and then I see him about to turn and look at me after I've blinked, I blinked again. And I don't fully commit all my clip just after one blink because that's when you're, you're going to take the most damage. A lot of Tracer is just like avoiding damage more than doing damage because as long as you're avoiding damage you're still doing damage but it's more important the only time you want to blink in and then try and unload a literal full flick on someone is if they don't if they're not paying attention to you so like a zen that's by himself or like a mccree but a lot of times if you start shooting mccree in the back and you're too close you want to instantly blink pre preemptively because you know he's gonna 180 flash So right there, I could have shot longer, but since I was in the air and he was aiming at me, it's better to just blink away because if he headshots me, I'm at one HP. And then, uh, kind of like when I talked about earlier, Tracer is probably the most important about how you know your own movement is doing. So, you know how I talked about McCree and Soldier, you want to know like what kind of strafe patterns you're doing? Since Tracer has so many like movement options like Blink and like she's like fast and like a small hero, you need to know when you're just AD ADing, long strafing or crouch spamming because you can be doing a bunch of these different moves all the time. But if you don't know what kind of movement you're doing, you're not able to counter aim yourself and your your aim will be all jittery. So you have to think about what kind of movement style you want, and that's why it's important you know like the different aim style matchups that you're going against. Oh, he dropped healing fast. So I'm trying to dodge rocket. I'm trying to force him to reload, or until the healing pad is over, because that's when that's when I can do the most damage. If he's reloading, I can basically kind of just like stand still and shoot at him if I want, because he can't shoot at me, and he, soldier has a pretty long reload. And as long as I dodge the fucking uh, helix rocket, all of his burst is gone. So there's no threat to me anymore. McCree is kind of the same. Whereas if you've seen a McCree use roll and you can bait out all six shots. Like that's one, two, three, four. Uh, that's a dead eye. But you can kind of, you can kind of pepper people and then force them to like reload. 
and then go all in once they're in the reload phase. See there, he was looking at me. I overcommitted to damage and he was able to shoot me where I should have just blinked and then readjusted my aim and finished him off. But since I'm kind of in his line of sight, there's a high chance that I can just die instead of just being safe. This guy's not looking at me, so I don't really have to like do anything, any blinks or anything. That's why you'll see tracers do like a, a lot of like 180s on people because it, it, it puts the onus on the individual to react to your movement instead of you reacting to what they're doing. Or well, you're kind of reacting what they're doing because as long as they're looking at you, you want to go on an opposite side. But it forces them to make like insane aim and it's unpredictable to them, but very predictable to you. Right now, I don't have any blinks, so I kind of just want to wait till I have blinks and then get Helix rocketed in the face. Now, I'm going to say this now for anyone that's learning Widow. Widow is the single most cancer hero to aim with in Overwatch. The reason for this is you are stuck in one spot. Everyone else has all the options and movement options to do it, but you are very easy to hit. It is very hard to hit someone else. And as long as they're hitting you, you're on a fucking timer and you have to hit one shot. That's why aiming with Widow is cancer. But a lot of people will fuck up Widow aim uh, because they don't stop when they want to shoot pretty much. I think whenever you're going to take a shot as Widow, you want to be standing still. Because like I said, with like this movement is the same as moving to the left. I'll try and show that again. Like going like this with my mouse is the same as going like that left. So say you want to make this flick, but you move left to the same time, you over flick because your FOV and your zoom is so far in that like moving left like this is pretty much the same fucking thing. But most of the time, when you're about to take a shot as Widow, you want to stand still because it, reduces your chance of missing and then that goes with my widow tips video where most of the time when you're widow you want to try and find opportunities where you're taking easy shots rather than hard shots because in dm like this you're taking a lot of fucking hard shots that you're most likely gonna miss Like right here, it's better for me to just SMG this Genji than it is to scope in. Because I'm pretty much no threat to the Genji when I'm scoped in, because he can do whatever he wants. But at least when I'm SMGing him, it's forcing him to do something. So a lot of Widow is kind of just finding a sensitivity that's comfortable within you and uh, not forcing your movement too much. Well, Ash's aim is pretty much the same as Widow's, except you have more leeway because you can uh, you can move a lot more than her. But because you're a scoped character in Ash, you want to uh, be able to stop when, whenever you can. Because it's, it's pretty much the same thing as Widow. When you're scoped in, this movement is the same as this movement. So if you're moving too sporadically for even yourself, you're going to fuck up your aim a lot. So uh, Ash is like a, a combination of a lot of styles, I feel like. Because you want to do large AD strafes so you can dodge a lot more but you want to make sure your strafes are very reliable or else they're going to miss. And then against at other ashes and other widows, you kind of do want to do you want to do the McCree thing where it's like stutter steps. But as you can see, when I'm aiming as Ash, I'm trying to stop when I shoot as much as possible. One of the other things you can do to not completely stop is you uh you shoot it, you basically play Counter-Strike style as Ash, where you're AD ADing, and as, shoot, as soon as you want to shoot, you press D. Like, so say, say you're going A, and then as soon as you want to shoot, you press D. So then at that split second, you've completely stood still. So it's like A, shoot. Like that, kind of. So it's either you're pressing D when you want to shoot, or you're, you're stutter stepping. That guy just fucking save it Private Ryan, that would've. But basically for Widow and Ash, standing still is the best. So that's like, that's why when you see Widows playing and they're against like no other uh, one shot uh, hitscan hero, they'll stand still a lot. So then they can like get the most out of their aim. 
and they have no like because if you're worried about another widow shooting you and you're going like this a lot there's a high chance that you're going to miss a lot of your shots you would probably hit and the other thing is is when you're ash versus widow is you don't want to force your shots too much because uh because widow wants to shoot when she's standing still you kind of want to wait a little bit after she's scoped in because then she's going to stand still which is then the easiest shot for you so that guy missed so then i wait well he's kind of rushing his shots but it's like you want to wait until he's kind of like fully stopped in a way because that's the easiest time to hit him whereas you could rush your shot before he fully stands still but there's a chance you miss and then they get to shoot you in the head because you missed basically against soldier as a hit scan more often than not you're gonna lose that fight as long as the soldier's good because soldier strafing you is uh, you're basically dead also i've started using toggle zoom instead of hold to zoom because uh when i since i don't pressure down when i aim a lot one of the reasons I've had inconsistencies... Well, here, for all you fucking people dance gaming, let me explain first, you fucking pussies. The reason is, since I'm a wrist aimer, and I'm not like you fucking arm aimers that play at, like, zero fucking sensitivity, and, like, you're fucking flexing the whole time and, like, fucking pushing your mouse as deep as you can into the fucking mouse pad. Since I'm not like that, as soon as I play, like, Widow or Ash, when I'm holding down right click, it creates that sensation that I'm not used to. And that's why I think sometimes when I switch to Ash or Widow, when I'm not... I have a weird inconsistency because I'm not do applying that same pressure usually. Whereas when I use toggle, I don't have that problem anymore. So Ash vs Tracer is very weird. You either want to continually strafe and do the shoot when you D kind of thing. Or you want to like stop and try and get that headshot. Genji is really weird. Whereas, okay, I'm not I'm not gonna Kefri this, but Genji is like a mix between very close hit scan aim and projectile aim. So like when you're right inside someone, it's pretty much hit scan is because you're just fucking inside of them and you're aiming right at them. What the fuck are you doing? Uh movement with projectile aim isn't as important as it is with hit scan aim it is but it, it projectile aim is very weird and very hard because you have to predict the future on where they're going in a way like so if i'm very far away i'm basically i'm basically like a pharah i'm trying to get directs on them and kind of like seeing where they go but at the same time, I'm trying to dodge them. But uh, there is one thing I see that a lot of Genjis do that would probably help people. I mean, it's so important. So the same things apply as the other things. When you're a Genji versus a McCree, you want to duck a lot because you're avoiding headshots. And you want to 80-80 strafe a lot because uh, that makes your movement like stupid. So as long as you know that, you can kind of aim at the middle and try and like do what they're doing. But then, say you're against a soldier, uh, you want to like track. You want to be able to like get those right clicks down. So you do a lot of like 80-80 strafes and make sure you get your right clicks in. Because hitting your shurikens as Genji is still very fucking important. But one of the other things I see people do is say I'm like on this McCree and I dash, I stand, I stand still as long as I don't get a flash and then I aim for a right click real quick because it's going to take them a little bit to turn. It's more important against like soldiers when you do that. I need my dash. I need my dash. No, no man, that didn't work. But you see how like when I come up to the soldier, I'm not like ducking and like trying to ad i'm kind of just like tracking and make sure i hit my shrukens on him because i know he can't really burst me and then genji versus genji is kind of weird because you're both jumping and you kind of want to track when he jumps the only thing that's interesting about genji is deciding when to left click and when to right click 
So there's sometimes when you're in middle distance as Genji, and it looks be it looks good to right click, but it's also it's actually better to uh, left click as as long as you're able to hit. I think Genji versus Genji, it's more important to left click than it is to right click. But like I said against Soldier, it's more important to like make sure you're hitting your right clicks. So like with Farah, I see her going left, so I I'm aiming like to her left more because I'm trying to get her into the shrukens and hoping she flies into them and that's how you like you're, you're predicting their movement when you're left clicking but then when you're right clicking right clicks are basically like hit skin you want to think of it as you want to like aim at them for the most part and since lucio jumps a lot it's very important to left click against lucio because you can kind of like track his jump as long as he's not on the walls I can probably try and do Zen aim after this. You don't really want to jump as much as against soldier. You don't really need to jump too much. It actually helps a soldier when you jump as Genji more than like helps you. It's like this the same principles, except Zen, Zen is a lot about flicking. I went about this in one of my other aim guide videos, but okay. So we got paint, right? Yeah, beautiful paint. It's paint time. But like I said before, the way you aim with projectiles is basically... So this this is the man. This is the man you want to shoot, right? And they're going this way. And you're this guy right here. This is... This is J. Jonak, right? As a hit scan, you kind of want to just aim at their head right here, right? Like you flick at their head and like, oh, they're dead. But as a projectile, you want to flick to where they're going rather than where they are. And the reason you want to flick is because when you make, you make that mental calculation in your head, like, okay, they're right here right now and they're going this way. In this amount of time, they're going to be right here. So you need to flick to that spot. So when you've made that mental calculation, they're there when you flick to that spot, if that makes sense, because the projectile travels there as they're going there when you flicked and made that calculation. That's how projectile aim works. And that's why it's important to flick as Zen because this guy is going like this and you're like, okay, it's gonna take this amount of time for him to go here. And if I aim at this point right here at this second, my thing will hit him as he's going here if he continues going there. So you have to go like, uh, uh, you make that quick calculation and you flick to that point that he's gonna be. Whereas if you don't flick, Say uh, he's moving this way, right? And you don't flick and you kind of track to there. Your calculation is constantly changing as you're tracking towards it. And there's a higher chance that you miss because he might be a little bit past it once you've tracked to that point in the future, if that makes sense. We're doing it live. Basically, I'm trying to get this across as best as I can. You're flicking to the prediction of the future of where they're gonna be. That's how that's how projectile aim works. Like, uh, this guy is going over here. He is right here at this present moment of time, but he is moving to the right. You know, based on his movement speed, he will be here in a little bit. So I know based on his movement speed and the direction he's going that, and you have to know how fast your projectile speed is. So I know how fast my Zen orb goes. I know fast he's moving. So you find that 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 cross point. You f you're trying to figure out this. It's basically like physics, right? Where there's a car going this way, there's a car going this way, and they're both going at different speeds. And what speed do they need to go to like hit each other in a way? So the reason you flick is because you make that calculation in your head where it's like, he's going this fast, this projectile goes this fast. If I flick to here, he will be here at this point. So you flick, shoot, and then he walks into it. Why flick? If Why not just aim there in the first place? Well, say, <laughs> say he's moving right, right? And you're you're already aiming here, but then all of a sudden he, aim, he goes left. Now you have to go all the way over here. That's why flicking is important. So you kind of aim, you aim around the person, but you don't really care where your crosshair is. You care about how the person is moving. 
So he goes right. All right, quick calculation flick. He goes left. Okay, flick. Because if you're already aiming at a spot, there, there's no chance that he will actually go to that spot. He can move however he wants. Someone asked me how Zen right click works. Okay, Zen right click is not like Zen left click. Zen, Zen right click is, uh, that's when you want to track. Since you're firing multiple shots, right? And this guy's moving to the right. Since it's a burst, you're, you're going here, 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 and here. So that's when you want to track where he's going instead of flicking because you want to hit him along the way with each shot. That that's so that's when you're doing Zen right click. That's when you track predict. And then now I can try and maybe explain movement with how Zen aims as well. With all the things I've said with all the other heroes applies to Zen's movement as well. Don't worry, I'm fixing it. So against a McCree or a Widow, you want to AD crouch spam, but then at the same time, you want to flick to where they are. Against Soldier, you kind of want to AD AD strafe. Against Genji, you can make wide strafes and kind of make sure you're getting your aim. Oh wait, I forgot he already used deflect. I could have killed him there. And uh, one of the reasons a lot of Zen stand still after they've right clicked is because, uh, like I said, your movement affects your aim a lot. And moving a small step can change where your right click goes a lot. There's there's one thing there's one thing that some tracers do that a lot of people think is really fucking good aim. Whereas I, it's very. I'll show you. So some tracer players aim like this where they're like going to someone and they go like this kind of right like they're like one of the only reasons this works is pretty much it's like the rng of tracer actually helps that aim style so you see how like the spread is like random as fuck say you're going like this so, so, so it's funny because like say you're aiming like this but all of the spread goes to the right but then you, uh, you're you doing that twitch aim, but when you aim to the right with that twitch aim, you kind of like make all the spray go in the middle and you get really lucky. It, it kind of helps, the, the sporadic aim kind of helps with the RNG in a way sometimes. Whereas if Tracer's aim was a direct beam, the sporadic aim would actually do less damage. That's why sometimes when you're seeing those people that do the sporadic aim and all of a sudden they get like, a full clip of headshots because like the spread just magically aligned with their shit where other people like say i like i like just track this guy without being sporadic i can miss sometimes because the rng is making the bullets go around him it's useful and not useful at the same time is the best way to explain it one of the thing that's weird about like people's perception of aim styles and shit is People love like twitchy sporadic aim more than reliable clean aim in a way. Well, not okay. So I won't. I'm not saying any aim style is better or harder or whatever than any other. But I'm saying the common conception is a lot of people love flick aim. Like when they see people who, like do this as McCree and get headshots, they're like, oh my god, this guy's so fucking good. But like, say someone just like tracks and like hits three shots in the row, they're like, eh, I guess that's okay. Like uh. I go McCree and like say I like just track someone. Fuck, do you stop shooting me? Track with 13 cents? That's actually see like that ash kill, I just hit three shots in a row. But it 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 doesn't look impressive, right? Like I hit all those shots on the McCree, but it's kinda like, eh, that's not cool though. Like you're just like kinda killing that guy. But like, then if I like go like, and like flick a bunch and then get like two headshots, everyone's like, whoa, fucking insane, crazy aim. How does he do it, dude? Like if I do this kind of aiming, right? Like everyone's like, wow, this guy has really good aim. Like he's hitting those fucking flick shots, dude. Like that's very impressive. Very impressive aim style, dude. But it's like, a kill is a kill, and a lot of people don't realize that. Like, sure, you can flick a lot, but flicking isn't always reliable. 
That's why there's people. That's why they're so. There's people that are like, oh, like peak Taimu, peak Pine. They're like the best players in the fucking game. Like at their peak, like when they're hitting all their shots, they're the best players in the game. Well, like you could say that for the same for anyone really, right? But like the thing with flicking is people have on and off days where it's like you can hit a bunch of flicks sometimes and then hit no flicks any other times. And that's why I usually prefer to uh, do the consistent track aim style and only flick when I need to and have to. Example of when you need to flick, uh, say a tracer, you're, you're tracking or like you're kind of aiming at a tracer and all of a sudden they blink. That's a time when you need to flick because they made a sudden movement that you want to instantly react to. Or say I'm fighting a McCree and he uses a combat roll. That's when you flick. It, you flick when someone does something that's very fast and unpredictable to you and you need to instantly react. That's usually when you need to flick. Flick shotting, when you can hit all of your flick shots, is better. Because you can instantly react to literally everything with precision shots. But then if you rely only on flick shots and you're not able to hit them, then you miss a lot. So I do think flick shotting is superior, but it's unreliable most of the time. If it's unreliable, is it superior? In a vacuum, it's superior, yes. But if you're able to hit every, literally every single flick shot, you're basically aimbotting. So in a vacuum, in a perfect world, yes, flicking is better, but based on human error and human unreliability, it's not superior. Overwatch is just a, a very hard game. And a lot of people don't realize that. And that's why I always try and make these guides to kind of try and help people and try and make people realize all the intricacies and all the things in Overwatch. So some people wanted me to go over Hanzo now. So Hanzo is the same as Zen, where he's a projectile hero. So you want to flick a lot, but a lot of the times you don't want to flick as well because of the prime time. So you kind of want to aim slow, and then when you're about to take that shot, that's when you flick. I got a no reg on the Mercy. This Mercy won't die. Hanzo is kind of like Widow and Ash, where you want to stand still when you're going to take your shot. And uh, the same kind of movement stuff applies for Hanzo, where you kind of want to have 80-80 spam against McCree and Widow. You kind of just want to strafe against Soldier. Yeah, like uh, Hanzo, you don't necessarily have to flick. You kind of can just like see where they're going. Like I, you can do, there's different aim styles with Hanzo and, and you can see it in a lot of players where you can kind of just like do this kind of aim style where you're very slow and you kind of wait for them to make a very predictable movement pattern. So you're very relaxed in your aim and you kind of see how they move and you like, you uh, use, you use people's rhythm against them in a way. So like right now I'm kind of doing that slow style where it's kind of like I wait to see how they're moving and then I finally take my shot. But then uh, there's other aim styles with McCree where it's well, with, uh, Hanzo, sorry, where it's it's all flick. So like you kind of see where they are and then you it's it's like Zen where you make that quick kind of decision and then you're like I'm gonna shoot him now. See, there's a bunch of different aim styles in this game and a lot of it is kind of just seeing what's best for you and seeing what's the most reliable for you but some things for different heroes are better than others but movement is the single most important thing i think because you need to know how you're moving and how to counter others movement to make your aim easier flick with storm arrow the reason i like flicking with storm arrow is because storm arrow is kind of like hit scan in the way where it's very very fast it's a very very fast projectile and you constantly need to readjust with how fast you're able to shoot it so that's why i like flicking with storm arrow do you think you'll do sombra well sombra is kind of the same as soldier and tracer there's no unique kind of thing as like sombra why do you flick with the hook as roadhog it's the same reason you flick as zen one of the other things i see hans was doing is they don't go for the 
the one shot. Like the, the max charge one shot. They actually like do like half shots a lot. Kind of like a widow like scope thing uh, where it takes like 61 or something scope charge to headshot as a widow. And like some Hanzos have that as well where they have that like kind of thing memorized and they like do they do like fast shots rather than like full shots. The reason I developed a uh, wrist aim was because uh, when I was younger, I had a mouse pad that was small as fuck. So I had to learn to use high sense. Lucio aim? Oh hell yeah, now, now's my time to fucking shine, dude. So, Lucio aim is projectile aim, but since you're always in everyone's face most of the time, you kind of want to look directly at where you want to shoot. So Lucio aim is kind of like Genji right click or Genji left click where you need to like aim with them but you need to be like on them a lot. Lucio is more about tracking like a lot Lucio requires a lot of tracking and one of the things people do is they boop them up in the air and then shoot them as they're falling down. And then like if a hit scan is hit, see me, since I'm so fast, I can just fucking 80-80 strafe and there's, <laughs> most of the time there's nothing the fucking hit scan can do about it. Like look at this guy's kill cam, like, how the fuck are you supposed to hit this fucking speed demon, dude? Like, <laughs> it's basically fucking luck. There's a reason why in closed beta, Lucio was the best 1v1 hero in the entire game. Like, in beta, Lucio did even more damage. Lucio was basically a, a fucking better tracer. And that's why there's a lot of, like, uh, you know, Papega Lucio players, because they basically think they're a DPS player when they're not. But the other thing with uh, Lucio is you, you can choose your engagements a lot. So, like, say there's this guy and I'm fighting him. I can just, like, ignore the shit out of him, run away, and then when my boop is back up, just, like, go in and then run away, and then they just come back. And there's literally nothing they can do about it. Like, as Lucio, you don't have to force fights, but Lucio is actually pretty fun. Because as Lucio, you're actually annoying as fuck. And uh, the way you wanna use your boop as Lucio a lot of the time is, say a guy is about to aim at you, or like hit you, that's when you want to boop. Like especially tracers. When a tracer starts shooting is when you want to boop. Because it, it fucks the shit out of their aim. And against McCree, it, it's more about like avoiding the flashbang. You're just like, you're just like an annoy- Yeah, see, now you use flashbang? Well, you're dead. How do you do auras? Well, usually when you want to Well, if you're at full health, you can basically just stay on speed because it makes you impossible to hit. But if you're at like a low health, you usually wanna use speed when you're jumping out of off of a wall or using boop and use healing in between that. I'll let you guys know why a lot of CSGO aimers are arm aimers. And the reason a lot of CSGO players are arm aimers is because CSGO isn't about raw aim, if that makes sense. What I mean by raw aim is uh, in Overwatch, there's so much different kind of movement and so much like up and down, left and right, instant flicks, like people can go fucking this way, this way, that way, that way, all like you need to be able to fucking 180 like constantly in Overwatch. But in uh, Counter-Strike, there's it's a lot about holding angles and like making sure you get a shot right when someone appears on the stream, on the screen, but like in CSGO, if someone's going around a corner, they, uh, they're not gonna, like, be a tracer and, like, all of a sudden, like, blink over there. Like, if I'm right here, I'm not all of a sudden gonna blink forward. As soon as someone goes around a corner in CSGO, you just need to be able to instantly shoot them right there. And if you have a high sense in CSGO and you need to flick, sometimes you'll overshoot. 
So the reason a lot of people have really fucking low sense in CSGO and arm aim is because you only need to make like the the margin of error for when you move your arm to like do that flick is very small for just killing someone that's corner peeking and that's why in CSGO it's all about low sense and uh, arm aim because the uh, most of the time you're not gonna do like a 180 flick or like a flick across here a flick across there because it's all about just corner camping and holding angles but the reason that some of those arm aimers in CSGO are able to hit insane flicks is because they've practiced with that arm aim for so long that they've grown that very accustomed muscle memory. But it's it's one of the reasons that a lot of CSGO players didn't transition to Overwatch as well because in, in CSGO, it's more about keeping your crosshair at head level. It's more about cr keeping your crosshair at head level and then like flicking because like no one's going to jump really. No one's going to instantly go up in the air. But in Overwatch, you need to know how to do this, 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 this. Like you have to know how to know every angle. Let me preface this as well or like end it with I'm not saying that like people that aim in Overwatch are better than people that aim in CSGO because a lot of Overwatch people could go to CSGO and then just get fucking shit on. It's just they all have different aim styles and everyone uh, gets accustomed to things differently. I would say CSGO is more about precise aiming and Overwatch is more about raw aim with movement.